I am going to make you want this knife. I can pretty much guarantee it. If you are a fixed blade knife fan, a knife collector, a tactical knife collector, I really don't see how you can resist it. There, you've been warned. I've gone down that road a few times, right? Check it. Semi-production, U.S. produced, fighting knife, perfection, the Blackjack Model 1-7. This is a nothing fancy tabletop review. Thanks for watching. That is a gorgeous fixed blade knife. Oh, another version. Look at the lines of this knife. How beautiful, flowing, classic they are, representing the same lines as the Randall Model 1. At this point, I will have you go watch perhaps my SOG Agency review. In that video is a detailed discussion of the Randall Model 1 and subsequently the SOG Agency, which is an outstanding knife. We'll see it again before this video ends. An interesting discussion on war fighting, the Vietnam War, special weapons of special operations folks back in the 60s, and that's where the Randall Model 1 really got its start. And in my mind, this knife pretty much follows those lines exactly. A classic fighting style of knife. Purposeful and yet elegant and beautiful at the same time. 10 out of 10. There I said it. Just beautiful. It's taken me a while to secure these for a tabletop review. Uh, about a year, actually. A couple of these are TMP blades. A couple of them are loners. In front of you right now is a natural micarta saber handled blackjack 1.7 and then in the back pommel handled black micarta a couple others will probably come out of the woodwork as we press along here blackjack blackjack that's an interesting knife company i reviewed the blackjack buoy what a gorgeous huge fighting knife that is that's a 10 out of 10 blade man i'm just impressed with the company uh, to me they're kind of mysterious though i mean you go to the Blackjack website, there's not a lot of contact information there. Their knives come out in batches and then they're kind of sold off and they'll go on to different models. And you may not see your favorite model for a long time. This knife, as far as I understand, was introduced in 1991. First pr produced, I believe, in Van Nuys, California. Uh, and then Blackjack moved to Effingham, Illinois, now in Michigan, I think. And I would imagine the 1.7 is also produced in batches as well. Especially when you get to all the different variations. And there's a lot of special versions of the 1.7 throughout the years. The handle materials, materials have been varied a lot. Chestnut, stag, micarta, a material they call dimar. Their most popular is actually this one right here. Not on the table, although I love these ones leather stacked. Huh, wonder why that is. Perhaps it's a Randall Model 1. Because guys who come after this knife and are willing to spend the knife, money on this knife, which honestly is not that much considering the amount of blade you're getting here. It really isn't. It's a very fair price. But they like the traditional leather stacking and a lot of these other similar knives that we've seen like the SOG Scuba Demo you know, that's traditional, especially if it's collector and they're kind of not wanting to go out and get a Randall Model 1. Blackjack 1.7, in my book, same quality levels. Yeah, I said it, same quality levels. For me, as a tactical knife collector, I am 1.2. This knife, to me, represents a Randall Model 1. Why go spend that money? That's perhaps an overhyped knife because of its historical significance. And it is extremely expensive. And that launches into philosophy of use. Collectible. You can't get a Randall again. Or perhaps another custom that follows these classic Randall lines. This is a good option for you. In fact, I would recommend it to all my TMPers. Just going with this knife. When you hold this knife and you see the perfect workmanship on the Blackjack 1.7 you'll know every penny you spent was worth it. Jumping ahead. 
I get excited when I hold these blades. I cannot lie to you. I mean, I took them out for the review tonight. I started holding them. I was like, gosh, these are awesome blades. Awesome blades. You just look at it. The balance and the feel, perfection. Quality, the fit, the finish, the sharpening. There's no flaws in these blades. I've got four. I've seen over time probably 20 and they're just perfect. As a collectible, forget Randall Model 1, just as a, a fighting knife that you want to put in your collection, absolutely. Hand me down to your kids. Dudes, this is off the charts. Collectible. How about a Woods Blade? Uh, I, I just can't bring myself to use my 1.7 <laughs> out there thumping on it because I have so many other hard-use knives that I batter and beat up. You've seen it over the last four and a half, coming up on five years. Why go and thump on this knife? You certainly could. I think it's up to the task. There is a caveat with a steel we'll talk about. But as an outdoors knife, sure. It's all the stuff I've talked about. On a, I consider this actually a mid-sized blade, even though it's a seven inch blade. In most people's books, that's a big blade. But a big blade to me is like a 10 inch fixed blade, something like that. I know it's crazy. Eight plus. I guess it is a big knife, but kind of mid size and some philosophies of use. Woods blade, yeah, it could be used as that. It's real calling, though, just like the Randall Model 1, just like the SOG Agency. Other than collectible and enjoyment for the user, is a classic fighter. A lot was, a thought was put into the original design to make it good at that role. And I certainly believe the 1.7 is an awesome fighting blade. Now, if we get down to the nitty-gritty of what constitutes a good fighting knife, and gosh, I, you know, honestly, I hate even thinking about it. I talked to this on the Bark River Bowie Knife review. It is brutal. I mean, I don't like discussing it. It is also a part of the United States history, though. The Bowie Knife is part of the history yeah, the Wild West still is. There's a lot of dudes that feel good carrying some cold steel on their hip. Won't jam, won't break, won't run out of ammunition. I understand it. I respect it. And this has some standoff capability with that 7-inch blade. It is a fighting knife. I was going to say when you talk about absolute fighting knife capability, then you could make a case for, well, I want really ultimate traction back here. Perhaps a compromise given to style with the micarta handles, the leather stacked handles, any of them for that matter. Ultimate traction in my book is really high traction G10. Is that the most gorgeous looking fixed blade knife out there? No, it, it just wouldn't look nearly as cool as this, but it might be a little bit more functional. But the blade shape itself, the sweep, the belly, the reach, the double extended quillion guard, just like the Randall Model 1. That's a serious fighting knife, and I actually find my card is rather grippy when wet. Less so when it's polished, but it still offers some traction. When you get it covered in blood, probably all bets are off. It's just such a slippery mess. How about a pig sticker? <laughs> Philosophy of use. <laughs> Can you imagine going out on a pig hunt down Texas, Florida? By the way, I'm all for the eradication of those vermin down there. You show up with this knife, 1-7. I don't know, honestly, if the dudes you'll be hunting with down there could appreciate the quality knife that you just showed up with. You kind of got to be a knife guy or a tactical guy to appreciate this blade. If you're a troop serving overseas, hang on to this thing because people are going to want to steal it big time. It might be just a little bit heavy for me to carry on my LBE as a troop knife, but you could. What a gorgeous blade, though. That's philosophies of use. I'll leave it at that. Weight on most of these knives is going to be around 10 ounces. And then when you throw in the leather sheath, it's going to be a little bit more. This knife really isn't about the weight because, honestly, the first philosophy of use is collectible. Perhaps even rising to commodity level and in as much I think they will at least keep their value and then perhaps go up in value, especially for the more limited edition special versions of the 1.7. I already said it, the balance is perfection. Forward grip, reverse grip. It's just a gorgeous and fast in hand fighter. That takes us to blade design and steel. 
classic buoy shape unsharpened swedge running on the top false edge if you will you could sharpen that man would that be a wicked addition to this knife I would recommend it actually where it's legal there's the belly perfectly ground tip this you're basically again I keep saying it but you're looking at a Randall model one everything that it has there may be some slight variations on grind close enough you can see it has the extended tank here before the blade run starts that's very model one ish but I like it to come here yeah I like it when the blade edge starts closer to the hilt myself and there's that gorgeous double quillion guard who needs jumping when you have that I mean your hands not going to go forward you talk about a fighting knife there you go a2 a2 tool steel is what this one is being produced in now previously they had different steels 0170-6 is kind of an improved 1095 was being featured at one time on the 17 then they went to 1095 I think a short run of 52100 whatever that is I don't even know what that steel is AG Russell did a run in ATS 34 and just like a lot of small knife makers I don't think this is like hey you know a a a concerted decision of hey let's produce it in this steel and this steel it's kind of what they have on hand and that's what they'll go with and they'll slowly change over to a different steel as they get it I think A2 for this knife is an outstanding choice A2 will rust on you I mean it is a air hardened tool steel the makeup last time I checked is like 1% carbon about 0.2, 0.5% vanadium it has 5% chromium in there kind of placing it between O1 and D2 tool steels I haven't really hard used A2 before I understand it's tougher than D2 it won't chip out like D2 will sometimes less wear resistance than D2 out of box these come just insanely sharp convex ground by the way that's what you like that's what you're going to get look at the edge just gorgeous the finishing is perfect just a beautiful satin finish got a nice flat right here for resharpening on a consistent angle grinder this portion here not hollow ground like the SOG agency is we'll take a look at that here in a minute beautiful blade very stoked on it by the way this steel is super high quality and I think A2 is difficult to get the heat treat right on it so this is triple tempered cryogenically treated A2 steel by blackjack read that it's pretty awesome it's also a full tang design extending all the way to the back is my understanding Wow, that takes us to the handle look at that beautiful polished micarta look at the fitting on it you run your fingernail here on all these knives it's not going to catch slightly just due but due to the difference in material but it, the fitting on the handle is beautiful on this semi-production blade I love the roominess on the 1.7 that is a big handle there's other handles that I criticize especially if you're gonna put it in the fighter role I just run out of real estate and they're just hard to grasp and you won't have that problem here I have large hands again whatever grip you want to go with you're gonna have enough rim on it how about between those two handles actually I have three handles represented saber handle that is again the pommel handle standard and this one is actually the 17 commando represented right here so it has kind of a double tapered leather stacked handle on it this is how you do a leather handle run your fingernail smooth smooth now I didn't say that on the SOG agency I might as well show that here also a beautiful knife 10 out of 10 for the price level SOG agency wearing a nice leather sheath this is not quite up to the quality standards of the 17 I said that you run your handle or your fingernail here you're gonna see a little bit of variance on the handle still awesome don't get me wrong I mean it's well done but it ain't like this this is not perfection this is the reason I give this a 10 out of 10 it is beautiful it's just well executed 
hollow ground, huge fighting knife, long the lines of the Randall as well, more or less. Value. The value on this is smoking. I will totally stick with a 10 out of 10. I can take the little variance in the handle. It's just nitpicking for collectability. For a second kind of cool thing. So out of these handles, there's probably two ways to evaluate them. One is in, again, first kind of cool functionality. I would say probably the Sabre grip is more functional. It's bigger, it's flared out, it provides some traction since you have kind of a flared out portion here. So the knife won't come out of your hand as easily. You do have a lanyard hole even on the Sabre handle. Flat finishing on the back. Look at the finishing on that. Natural micarta. Polished variety. Colored spacers. I just keep getting distracted with the looks. And then I would say either one of these would be great as a fighter. I'm talking first kind of cool. This is the double tapered. If you could find this one, good luck. I think it was very limited. Excellent for what it is. Again, roomy. You're not going to run out of room on that handle. And then there's just the standard, oops, the standard pommel. Also excellent. Beautiful spanner nut right there. Fong hole right there for your lanyard. Polished aluminum. Butt cap. Just, I'm getting excited again. What can I say? That takes us to the sheath. And here comes number four. Also a natural micarta. This is a standard pommel. 1.7. The, sh the sheath is U.S. produced and it's put together by a company called Sharpshooter Sheath Systems. I have looked at them before. Talked to them before. Like the Bark River Bowie knife. And they are just excellent. Saddle stitching. Top grade. Uh, I was going to say nylon. Leather. Smoothed and waxed edges on this sheath. I've kind of stained this one while I was carrying it. Yeah, I carried one. Loop over belt. Very traditional. It's a beautiful knife. It doesn't mar the blade either. I really like that. So you put this beautiful knife in there, like so, and you carry it, and you're not going to mar the blade. Looks good, doesn't it? For this knife, this is the right sheath. It wouldn't look right in a ballistic nylon sheath, I don't think. Especially when you talked about I don't know, tactical philosophy of use. Don't get me wrong. I'm still on board with high-end carry, even with a fixed blade knife. And if you want to, I say rock and roll. And you could actually make a Kydex sheath for this. If you're going to put it in a hard-use philosophy, then I would probably make a Kydex for it. If I could make a plastic, I would do that because it's going to save me weight. Put that on your LBE. This is not a great sheath for LBE, obviously. It'll get wet and stay wet. There is no drainage. It's a very traditional kind of a hunting sheath. On to competitive options. I've shown you one already. Still love it. The SOG Agency is going to be cheaper. If we compare them side by side, it'll look something like this. SOG Agency on the top. Blackjacks surrounding it. About the same length, really. A little bit more length with the Agency, just very slightly. Bigger handle with the 1.7. Bigger Quillian guard with the 1.7. Convex ground, hollow ground, OS 8, A2. There are some differences there. Again, this is my favorite version of the, of the agency. Beautiful black finish. Oh my gosh, that tie knife. Polished tie knife is just insane. I don't have too many others really in this category to show you. And that's to say this category is so limited. Semi production blades at this price level are just not around. The price is going to be around $170. That is great value for this knife. I told you I'm going to make you want one. I, if you don't want one already, I don't know what's up. 170 for this knife is totally worth it. Now keep in mind, I've rolled out folding knives that go well beyond that mark. That and Some are U.S. produced. Some aren't. I think I've done a folding knife here and there. It's around that price point that's not even U.S. produced. This is a U.S. manufactured, honestly, semi-custom blade for about 170. Now you go with a more unique handle material like the sandbar stag. Sam bar stag. That's going to be a lot more. Maybe around 220, something like that. Various versions if you go on the secondary market like eBay, you may see them go all the way up to 500 on this. But at its given price point, you can still go out there and get these. If I find a a retailer, a source for them, I'll annotate it right here. And that's my recommended place to go get them. 
there's not a lot out there that follow this line, the beautiful classic Randall fighting lines at that price point. I, I don't have a lot of knives to roll in front of you, especially ones I have. Now there's some more, much more affordable production ones. Here comes a SAW government agent. Love that knife. Love it. Out of production. The steel is, in this version, was aw 6 which I hate. I shouldn't say hate. It's just too soft for me. Craton handle, pommel cap. This is a user. This is not in the same category as this. This is a knife, a troop knife that I highly recommended back in 08 when I reviewed it that you, you wear and tear it. It's not the same level of collectability and specialness. How about that SOG Tech Bowie knife? Well, I have that one. It's a beautiful knife. Production knife. Overseas produced. OS 8 steel, cryogenically treated. It's a smaller blade, craton grip, pommel handle, flush spanner nut, the SOG treatment. That's a beautiful knife. I reviewed it. Love it. Classic SOG shape. Same category, roughly, roughly. You know, how about this one? This is just funny. I just grabbed this out of the knife safe. This is a nut and fancy cold steel Laredo Bowie knife, an SK5, Dura coated, running a Red Hill Kydex custom sheath. I'm going to show you just for size comparison. Now that's a big knife. Remember I was telling you about my definition of big? There you go. <laughs> that's a big knife. That is a mean mamma jamma. Awesome knife. Now, after my modifications, these two knives are in the same category as far as specialness. That's just me, though. That's where an A-grip synthetic suede on the handle. Custom coloration. Yeah. To me, though. You know, I say this all the time. The, the, collect the value of the collection is in whoever owns it. Do you love it? That's all I'm going to show you for competitive options. There's really not too many that can stack up against a Blackjack 1.7. Very few that I see out there. Agency would be one. In terms of first and second kind of cool, that does stack up against it. U.S. produced, though. You want a U.S. produced, perfectly executed blade. There you go. Bark River. Mike Stewart at Bark River. Maybe you should crank that production line up on 1.7. This video just may create some demand. Resurrect the line. Oh my gosh, is this a gorgeous fighting knife. Just beautiful. Fast, lively, perfectly balanced. Excellent choice in steel. Fit and finish is flawless. That's an unfancy review. Tinsies. See ya.